Hello everybody, welcome to The Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about the new album from Monolake, Archaeopteryx. Okay, Monolake, Robert Hanky, it's been a long time since I've had the chance to talk about this ambient techno veteran. I did review his last album, VLSI, when that came out in 2016, link in the description as per usual. I'm not going to do the In Brief segment this time around, since I already did it back then, even if I did screw up the order in which the albums came out and put Gravity after CinemaScope, it's the other way around. Uh, but if you want a brief recap on my thoughts on the guy, here's a quick illustration. Every single CD, I own it. Mono Lake is an artist who uh, has been extremely formative to my music tastes. I discovered him very early on in my earlier high school years. And getting into his super minimalistic blend of dark ambient techno laid the stepping stones for me to be able to appreciate lots of different styles I wasn't into before. He even helped me get ambient music in a way that I hadn't before. And now that kind of stuff is like the vast majority of what I cover on this channel. While this guy is hardly in heavy listening rotation nowadays, he can be the kind of artist that I need to be in the right mood to be able to get the most out of. I will always have a soft spot for his music. As far as I'm concerned, there isn't a single miss in the Monolake catalog. You can always count on this guy to put together immaculately constructed techno beats with brooding atmosphere that can pull me in unlike anyone else. And uh, he's hardly formulaic either. Each album has had a slightly different flavor and feel to it that isn't like any of the other ones. So with all that background, when completely out of the blue without warning, he just dropped an entire 19 track double album of new material. I purchased the whole thing the second I saw it available. And no doubt I would love it. My expectations were through the freaking roof. Now perhaps given the fact that this thing is 19 tracks running on for 95 minutes, it should probably be no surprise that this thing can maybe be a bit unwieldy. Not every track is solid gold and there's a part of me who feels like this project maybe could have used some cutting down to be the strongest possible experience it could be. Not to mention, if you are familiar with Monolake's previous body of work, Archaeopteryx doesn't exactly stray too far from what you would typically expect out of him especially feeling pretty aesthetically similar to his last album, VLSI. Well, not to the point where this album wasn't able to form its own identity apart from that project and any of his others. But I would not say Monolake is treading much of any unproven ground with this thing. Though even if VLSI was tighter and more to the point, I still feel like this project is a notable improvement on it. I think it covers a lot more ground, it's more adventurous, and certainly more exciting a listen than that project was. There's just so much cool stuff all throughout this project. At no point did I ever feel bored or end up feeling checked out. Every listen, I feel like I would pick up on something I didn't notice before or glean a new favorite track. This thing constantly had me on the edge of my seat and just exemplifies why I freaking love this guy's music. It, it's just a ton of fun from start to finish. This, this was so freaking good. This is probably my favorite monologue project in well over a decade, at least since I want to say momentum which might still beat it out, mainly because of nostalgia, but yeah. And Polygon City's also probably has some uh, stronger standouts, but this is more consistent. But yeah, may as well just go through individual tracks. We start out with Gant Exodus, which lets you know what you're getting into. Starts out with the usual blend of minimal techno you typically expect out of Monolake. All the same recognizable muted metallic percussion textures and maybe some subtle screeching sounds in the background that sort of resemble like a string ensemble scoring a horror movie. But then all these amazing melodic washes slowly bleed into the mix, warm pads, cascades of bleeping synths, it all sounds freaking gorgeous. Not all Mono Lakes, especially the later period stuff, has been particularly melody-centric. Honestly, a lot of the post-cinemascope stuff has gotten away with having very little of it, yet still working for me pretty effectively, thanks to building really effective dark atmosphere. But this album sees a welcome return to a lot of those old interstate era sounds, where more of that melody and faux organic texture is introduced. I was so happy to get so much of that kind of stuff on here. There's a much warmer and more cinematic presence to this album that hasn't been there since, like, my old favorite classics. Most of the other tracks on here follow the same kinds of sounds as this first track, though there's plenty of variation as you'd hope for out of a 90 minute 19 track project. Infernal Limit, for instance, is more slow building and ambient centric, while even more dramatic sounding. Its plunking synth melody sounds somewhere between like harpsichords and some kind of Asian harps. It is the longest track at eight and a half minutes, though honestly didn't feel that much longer from any other tracks on here. Just kind of blended into the mix with everything else, I don't know. <laughs> it's a good sign when a track like that is one of the lower ones. 
Triode Univec, meanwhile, is a bit more on the subtle side, while maintaining a stronger groove, still containing some windy melodic pads in there and a few twinkling high-pitched textures. Sounds like roughly what I would expect out of any given Monolake production, though still kinda slaps. Transient Noir is a straight dark ambient interlude, uh, mostly just whooshing air conditioning pads that create a very chilling atmosphere. Eventually some sort of organ-like pads and other clanking textures coming into fill the mix and make things even more interesting. It's pretty short, but adds some interesting flavor that an album of this scope would definitely need. That's a, that's a very good one. Direct Onyx has an odd time signature and all these sour dissonant synth chords that, for that extra heightened tension, and some more rounded bass lines for good measure, though eventually building into something more consonant and almost triumphant sounding later. That one pretty consistently stuck out to me. Less so did Pelton Rota. Which on one hand is still definitely good, uh, the percussion is satisfyingly sharp and banging and going over lots of evolving melodic chord pads wishing past and slowly melting into different textures as it goes on. Didn't stick out in the greater mix of the full album, there were similar sounding tracks that grabbed my attention more. But again, if this is one of the low points, that should speak to how solid this album is. <laughs> Clockwork Fatigue lives up to its title with all its various marching metallic percussion textures aiming to mimic various ticking clocks, creating a strangely satisfying and mysterious groove. Admittedly not the first time he's done this idea, his Silence album in 2009 for instance had a track called Internal Clock that was pretty similar sounding, but this still definitely stuck out to me as a highlight all the same. Just the sheer variety of clanking textures that go into this one constantly held my attention. But then we get Feynon Ono, an ambient cut which is way more light and refreshing than anything I've ever heard from Monolake. All these bright and enveloping pads and plinking melodic textures that sound kind of like xylophones. It kind of gives me like carbon-based lifeforms vibes in the best way. Never would have expected a cut that sounded like this on this album. Of course that vibe doesn't last long and we're then treated to Urx Argyll, this, this stranger techno track with among the hardest hitting beats and some sparse disconnected melodic flares and more xylophone synths at some points, but most characterized by all these strange processed and garbled vocal noises that sound like alien robots trying to communicate or something, I don't know. That one definitely stuck out in the mix as well. And then uh, the first disc of the album ends in Anamorph Iris, which wasn't as big a standout as the last couple from like a textural standpoint. Mostly slow and subtle beats and shifting melodic pads, a few gurgling bass washes here and there all throughout. Another track that could theoretically pass me by if I'm not paying that much attention to it, though again, it's still pretty solid and has some surprisingly nice bass licks and a few points that I quite liked. Not the kind of track that would necessarily be a great closer if the first half of this album were a standalone project, but I don't see the two discs of the album as being fundamentally different enough to be treated as such. It is technically a double album, but only because it has to be packaged that way physically. It otherwise just feels like one big unified experience that you don't really separate into two discs. But anyway, uh, the second half of the album does have a pretty strong start with Espas Fouille. Uh, the only track on here with discernible vocals, though not actual human ones, of course. Sounds more like French text-to-speech or something. But the way they go up against the tense, anxious bass lines and various off-kilter pad progressions do come together in among the most compelling and memorable grooves on the album. Sync Response, meanwhile, combines all these tapping and clapping percussion sounds that slowly build up as you go on, with these super intense and blocky synth stabs that just blast through the whole mix at various intervals, and some banging tom drums and sort of timpanis later on. That one's pretty interesting. But then we get two more of my big favorites. Plateau Orthogonal brings back all the metallic ticking clock percussion, though this time applied to a very different mix than on Clockwork Fatigue. Uh, has all these spacious ambient pads, as well as plinky high-pitched piano notes, and clanging bell sounds that, built, that blend into the jangly percussion mix quite seamlessly. That one sounds really freaking cool. And then there's Orbit Incomplete. Oh man, this might be my favorite track in the bunch. Mainly thanks to the way it uses pianos in this really present and obvious way. Adds a surprisingly emotional touch to this track. And then of course we got a whole bunch of strange side tracks. There's the intro, which kind of reminds me of the intro of Outaker's Silver Side. There's the more beat focus sections, which combine fairly subtle tapping percussion with all these big muffled noises that sound like mountains of gravel being dumped. And the way all of these elements bleed into each other as you go on, this is one of the most well-textured, dynamic, and interesting tracks I've heard out of Monolake, maybe ever. 
Perhaps, unfortunately, the remaining stretch of the album doesn't hit the same level of texture and memorability as those two, but that's not to say it loses my interest, either. Prime D-Click is almost disappointingly short at just barely over two minutes, but still manages to create an identity out of its sparse banging beats and amelodic pads whooshing in and out, creating some pretty spooky and industrial-tinged vibes that kinda remind me of cuts on Momentum, like CERN or Tetris. Delta Overload has more xylophone-esque synth melodies that plink away over all these super menacing bass rumbles, and later synth pads that sound like mellotrons or something. Again, creating this really dramatic and intense mix that pretty consistently pulled me in despite having barely any percussion at all. It's basically just one super muted booming kick way in the background going at halftime and that's it. That one's, that one's very nice. And it leads quite nicely into the similarly dark and stormy Aluminimum. <laughs> which has this uh, grooving bass line going up against these big expansive chord pads and a mix of skittering percussion that slowly builds up and gets denser as you go on, sometimes tripping back to just an 808 rim shot and a 909 clap, but then picking right back up where it left off. And then later there's even these kind of like just strange distorted sounds that whoosh in and fill up the whole mix. And then everything just completely stops dead for a few seconds before just resuming the groove where it left off. This is another really solid cut there. Specimen Fractal is the penultimate track, another more simplistic and less melody-focused cut. Pretty dense mix of shifting and tapping percussion going over this buzzing off-key bass stab that comes in every few beats and is joined by some dramatic synth chords later. Not a major standout, but still definitely creating some solid groove that hits hard. And then finally, we close with Allure Publison, one last beatless cut to take things out. Lots of layers of subtle wavering and bleeping synth melodies that make you feel like you're standing behind a console of a spaceship in a science fiction movie, and some melancholy pads that for that kind of airy and lonely vibe for good measure. Pretty solid and fitting way to go out. And yeah, that's everything on Archaeopteryx. Man, this project had so freaking much good stuff in it. Sure, it's not a project that felt like it absolutely needed to be as long as it was, and I imagine not everyone is going to want to make the commitment for all of it. Even I will admit, this isn't exactly a project that makes 95 minutes zip by as if they were nothing. No, I did kind of feel that length. I could say that this album could stand cutting down, but honestly, I don't really feel that strongly compelled to do so myself. Sure, not every track is a stunner, but none of the 19 tracks on here felt out of place or lacking in identity or gave me any urge to skip them. It may be long, but it's not really to a bothersome extent. If you've never heard any Monolake albums before, I'm not sure if I'd mark this as the best possible place to start. I think Interstate and Cinemascope are much better starting points for those unfamiliar. But this wouldn't be the worst place to start either, this is certainly one of his most accessible releases from a Sonic standpoint. But if you're already a fan of Mono Lake and somehow haven't picked this up yet, what are you doing? Pick it up immediately. This is one of my favorite projects to come out of Rubber Hanky in years, and given I already found his track record pretty rock solid, that should be saying something. This is definitely going to end up on my year-end list somewhere, even in an already stacked year for electronic music. So make sure you give it a shot as well. I'm overall feeling an 8.5 out of 10 on this. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. So leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're awesome people. You want to add yourself that list or make me review something, link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.